February is Fireball Month. NASA has photographed about half a dozen of these bizarre slow-moving, deep-diving fireballs. Their sizes vary from basketballs to buses. Where are all the strange meteors are coming from? They all hail from the asteroid belt, but not from a single location in the asteroid belt, said Bill Cook of the Meteoroid Environment Office at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. There is no common source for these fireballs, which is puzzling. There have been five or six notable fireballs that might have dropped meteorites around the United States alone. Germany and Japan have also had notable sightings. February 1st, a meteor lit up the skies over central Texas, putting on a dazzling show for people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It was extremely bright and took eight seconds to cross the sky, said I witnessed Darren Moore and Dot. I could see the fireball start to slow down, then it exploded like a firecracker artillery shell into several pieces, flickered a few more times, and then slowly burned out. As bright as the full moon, the fireball and was spotted by NASA cameras in New Mexico, more than 500 miles, 805 kilometers, away. It was likely caused by an object 3 to 6 feet, 1 to 2 meters, wide, NASA researchers said. These fireballs are particularly slow in penetrating, meteor expert Peter Brown, a physics professor at the University of Western Ontario, said in a statement. They hit the top of the atmosphere moving slower than 15 kilometers per second, 33,500 miles per hour, decelerate rapidly and make it to within 50 kilometers, 31 miles, of Earth's surface. And the meteors have kept coming. My question is what is knocking our asteroid belt around out there? Hey folks, it's uh, Thursday, October 17th, about 11 o'clock Mountain Time, 2013. Fire in the Sky News tonight here at the American Meteor Society. Started the day off with a bang, a major event over California. Many witnesses saw a spectacular fireball, which we are now referring to as rock stars instead of shooting stars because people are seeing something that is just not typical, in my opinion. These reports are quite dramatic. Um, and right now, we're getting some reports starting to come in from the East Coast, from Maryland, uh, Potomac, Towson, and uh, Severn. And uh, one person describes it as definitely one of the coolest things he's ever seen. Um, another person described it as fragmenting. It broke into many pieces. Um, gave it a minus 9 and minus 13, respectively. Um, the one out of the Potomac, they didn't give much of a description. So it's orange, red, and brown. And again, multiple chunks. Multiple chunks moving in tandem with the main object. And this one here, they did hear a sound, popping, whistling sound. And that was um, out of the Potomac. So I'm sure there'll be more reports um, associated with that. And that, like I said, that just came in within the last hour. So I have to wait and see how many more come in on that. But the night's still young, and, and we'll see what, uh, see what tonight brings. But looking at the NEO uh, program... We do have a close encounter coming up on the 19th, which will be Saturday. Uh, asteroid about 50, 60 feet wide, coming just outside the Earth-Moon system at 1.6 LD. And I think there's some other ones slated, too, uh, that are around 3.0, but um, that's pretty close. That's a close shave right there. It's the closest one I've seen in a, in a few days. But right now, getting some reports off the East Coast. Maryland seems like the, the hot spot at the moment. Um, and one thing I'd like to ask you guys while I've, I've got you here, uh, the last couple of days, and this is just a question I want to ask, um, if any of you people are feeling like extremely tired, you know, especially the last couple of days, my wife wanted me to ask, so I told her I would, um, and myself included, I have to be honest, today, I, for some reason this afternoon, and I, I don't normally get this way, I got really super tired, um, Joints are aching and stuff like that, and that's that's not like me at all. My wife, same symptoms. Uh, my 14-year-old daughter, um, and the only reason we're bringing it up is because she's feeling the same way. Um, and not only her, keep in mind she's a teenager uh, that's highly active and dance and all kinds of stuff. A lot of her friends in high school are uh, having the same complaints. These are high school kids, teenagers. I mean, they're young, running wild, but there's many of her students at school that are saying they're just very super tired, have been the last two days. Um, they just feel run down. Not necessarily sick, but just super tired. So I told my wife I would ask if any of you guys have been feeling those symptoms or know anybody that has. I don't know, maybe it's just a change in the weather. I don't know. It doesn't really change that much out here where I live, but I just wanted to ask. Anybody feeling tired the last couple of days? I know that's definitely not related to fire in the sky and fireballs, but it's important because something 
has changed, it seems like, in the last couple of days. And that's that's definitely not like me, but if you have or know anybody that has, please comment. I'd appreciate it. And as always, guys, during these uncertain times, be brave, be strong, and be wise. That's the news for tonight. Thanks for watching. The fireball flew Friday night. The East Coast does not mean the end of Western civilization as we know it. Although you may have succumbed to the prophecy that some social media stopped running, the sky lit along the entire U.S. East Coast those who saw it described it as a thin stripe of blue-green-white, explains Chip Guy, who was driving in eastern Maryland when he and his family saw him. It did not last more than eight or nine seconds, and then disappeared, said a spokesman Guy Sussex County, Delaware. Frankly, I did not think too much about it, he says, but became concerned when he published it in the web of the local media. Triggered a rapid and overwhelming. That was just the tip of the iceberg of what was going to happen that night. Throughout Friday night, every few seconds a message appeared on Twitter from someone who had seen the meteor. Some of the messages were from the cities of New York and Washington. Dabu 7, we've had a huge fireball over Oregon today. Uh, the news here is reporting that uh, multiple people got shots of this and sent in pictures, and they wasn't sure exactly what this object was. This first shot, I mean, I'm not sure if we're looking at chemtrails here or what, and there's a, there's a streak here, but there's an object right here in the frame, and I'm not sure what this is. If this is what they were seeing, there's no trail off of it, uh, there's no smoke, there's no nothing, and that is way too large to be a bird. Uh, for a bird to look like that, it had to be somewhere up here in this tree line, somewhere up in this area, not way out there like that. If I mean, I guess it could be a possibility. But I'm not sure if that's the object they're talking about or not. Uh, when looking at the other pics, it is clear this is the fireball that they are talking about. Um, this pic is similar to the other, but there's no nothing up here. This is a very good shot here. Almost pyramid-type structure as it comes crashing down to Earth. Almost pyramid type structure. See it once again there. And again here. So, very interesting indeed. Fireball over Oregon in the shape of a pyramid. I'll leave links as always. This has been Dobby. This is Dabu7 reporting on a wild electric fireball taking place inside of Canada. That is fucking one. Oh my god.
Super Hats also. Info evidence, 24th April 2005. After the first and the second contact, see in an possible these videos. Only 22 days passed. And then... Debris. As you watch these uh, explosions come off, it highlights both energy that's blown off the sun, debris, and energy that's in the uh, solar system surrounding the sun between Earth and the sun. Again, this is SDO, a different satellite, but still Earth-facing. And we're gonna we got some problems here with these three sunspots. One has already went beta, gamma, alpha to the far right. There, the ones in the center is growing. We're getting the larger uh, actual flares from the center one here. But I'm going to show you the charts on them. Also, notice in the top, this is that coronal hole that we had with the heat, and we've had a hydro flare right there. That filament that we were watching yesterday, you can't see it rise because we're looking straight at it. But notice the wave that comes out at the bottom on both sides. That's called a hydro flare. You can uh, Google that, H-Y-D-E-R. But that's when a filament rises, the gravity of the sun pulls it back down, and it collapses. Notice that how it goes over that dark purple, that heat of the sun. Check that out. Now, I'm going to go through a couple of different cameras here, but we've got filaments that have, that's the tail end one there as the hydro flare collapse and see how far it reached. Remember, it takes 109 Earths if you uh, place them across the face of the sun to cover the distance to give you an idea of how massive each one of these objects that we're looking at. And in the dark green there, that's the coronal hole. I'm going to stop this and pause it on these strong flares. Again, Earth-facing images from the Solar Dynamics Observatory there. And I'll show you these on the charts. It's the strongest one in a few weeks. There, look at that arc, the power inside that. It's huge. And that's what's happening is we've, these sunspots are growing and spots around them are starting to tie in together. And that's why we're getting these multiple magnetic fields. And I'll show you that. Check this out on the close-up. But the SDO is by far our best camera, guys, um, it's to watch the sun with. You don't have the uh, Earth's atmosphere as you do from Earth, from ground-based telescopes. And you can they can really analyze, and you can too, with the different uh, cameras. Here's our peak. We went to an M3. That notice started on the 27th, up through the different flares. And then this one, that's the strongest one. And if you go back uh, almost in a couple weeks, guys, and you can see there, as I was doing the video, just a slight uptick. But we're going to watch this. All three of those sunspots are strong, and they're Earth-facing. You can see the three there, 13, and 34 here on the right. Beta, gamma, delta. See that with the red arrow? That's what you need for X flares. Now, 36 is going to be right behind it. It is beta, gamma. And I, I, probably by tomorrow, you're going to see that one capable of X flares. You can see the different colorations but in both areas there guys that's tell you telling you that you're getting a mixture of magnetic fields looking at the proton chart from the ACE satellites and let's look at the flare tracker this is the one this morning out to the left check that out I'm gonna let it play back through very strong notice also I sign in the pink square according to this model now it's not exactly accurate but you can see that it's pat well past earth and the size of that flare is enormous. We've had one left and right. The Earth is in the green dot just behind I sun. Excuse me, in the yellow dot just behind I sun. And the light pink square is the MAVEN satellite. We should, it's probably got the best pictures of I sun there is, and we're not being shown them. They're saying they're going to launch it out to Mars next. Now, looking at the American Meteorite Society uh, website, guys, notice Texas, Nevada, and that's on the dates of the 29th. They came in today. This was last night. San Jose, California, Turlock, Wiley, Katy, Texas, San Antonio, Cleburne, Universal City, and Las Vegas. And also, a third report came in from the U.K. And this is the, the map from last night of the sightings. But that's Edinburgh. And you can come here, and I'll link to this. This is uh, the Lunar Meteorite Hunter site. Notice here the meteor alert, large bolide meteorite events expected from the 26th up to January 2014. Uh, excuse me, up to the 12th of January 2014. And guys, that's when we're really in the center of the debris field is the 12th. 
that's not we're not past that of the incoming trail of ice sun before it went around the sun it's a heads up on this guys and we have got a schedule on our next radio show that will be 30 minutes after paul begley's show monday afternoon that's 3 30 eastern 2 30 central time but uh, we're going to go there watch his show and then we're going to take the latest incoming on uh, reports and i encourage everyone to call in guys the first show was kind of a technological disaster like i expected it to be but sometimes you just got to jump in and Instead of being afraid to do it and and learn it, and if you guys are trying to do, want to do that or make videos, just do it. Throw it out there, and you'll learn. And I'm learning. But guys, we had about 700 and something people all together, and that's pretty good. And even though um, all the uh, tech switches on my end weren't working properly, it was a great show, and I appreciate everyone calling in, and I encourage it. We're going to take calls, and we're going to let you talk about what you you feel like is important. Heads up, be safe that exploded over Russia gave 2.2 percent of the population burns to their skin. New research says an explosion such as this we actually could expect once at least every 25 years. Brighter than the sun studying new details on the meteor that exploded over Russia. Thanks largely to eyewitness and video footage researchers have documented chili bins with incredible detail. It was a blast felt around the world when the chili bins meteor exploded over Russia in February. Its shockwave was powerful enough to emit subsonic waves to far-flung regions across the planet. It says that the resulting shockwave sent 1,200 people to hospitals in the Chili Bens Oblast area that day. By watching various amateur video clips of the rock as it soared towards the earth, the team was able to determine key elements shown in the illustration below. Among them are the meteor's precise trajectory, its speed upon entering the atmosphere, exactly where it fragmented into smaller pieces, and the point at which that explosion shown most powerful. That moment, a searing bright flash, 30 times stronger than the sun, actually caused severe sunburns among bystanders. Shockwaves from the fireball, the team concluded, caused damage to an area up to 50 miles from the meteor's trajectory on either side. Fortunately, the largest fragment from the explosion, a 1,250-pound meteorite, hit a frozen lake. The team was able to recover that piece, and their subsequent analysis revealed that the rock, a relatively ordinary contrite space rock, was more than 4,400 million years old. A new study published this week in Nature warns that the likelihood of events like Chelly Spunk is 10 times higher than experts had thought, making the phenomenon one we can expect every 25 years or so. Here's the illustration of its impact and where it was felt. It was traveling 11.6 miles per second or 40,000 miles per hour. The meteor was brightest at 18 miles, I guess, above Earth when it exploded into fragments. 76% of the meteor evaporated before hitting the ground. 3,613 apartments had their windows shattered by the explosion. And 2.2% of the people outside at the time reported sunburns. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. Got my show. Bye. And what you're looking at is one of the craziest fireballs I've ever witnessed. Uh, hundreds of people seen this streak across the skies of Germany. Uh, and when they back out, you will see exactly where they're filming from. But one of the most interesting characteristics of this object is the fact that it changes direction. You could also see that it looks as if it's like dripping flames. See how it just cut that corner? And then burst. You're going to see it change direction again. And it reminds me of some kind of craft if it was shot and on fire, coming down, still halfway under control, zigging and zagging back and forth. I've never seen a meteorite ever act like this. They always are usually in a straight line. And as you can see, as this thing is coming down through the sky, it is on fire. And it's just like dripping flames. An amazing fireball event taking place in the skies over Germany. Wanted to share it with you. Ice and debris related? I don't know, guys. Till next time, eyes to the skies. February is Fireball Month. NASA has photographed about half a dozen of these bizarre slow-moving, deep-diving fireballs.
Their sizes vary from basketballs to buses. Where are all the strange meteors are coming from? They all hail from the asteroid belt, but not from a single location in the asteroid belt, said Bill Cook of the Meteoroid Environment Office at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. There is no common source for these fireballs, which is puzzling. There have been five or six notable fireballs that might have dropped meteorites around the United States alone. Germany and Japan have also had notable sightings. February 1st, a meteor lit up the skies over central Texas, putting on a dazzling show for people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It was extremely bright and took eight seconds to cross the sky, said I witnessed Aaron Moore and I could see the fireball start to slow down, then it exploded like a firecracker artillery shell into several pieces, flickered a few more times, and then slowly burned out. As bright as the full moon, the fireball in was spotted by NASA cameras in New Mexico, more than 500 miles, 805 kilometers, away. It was likely caused by an object 3 to 6 feet, 1 to 2 meters, wide, NASA researchers said. These fireballs are particularly slow in penetrating, meteor expert Peter Brown, a physics professor at the University of Western Ontario, said in a statement. They hit the top of the atmosphere moving slower than 15 kilometers per second, 33,500 miles per hour, decelerate rapidly and make it to within 50 kilometers, 31 miles, of Earth's surface. And the meteors have kept coming. My question is what is knocking our asteroid belt around out there? Hey folks, it's uh, Thursday, October 17th, about 11 o'clock Mountain Time, 2013. Fire in the Sky News tonight here at the American Meteor Society. Started the day off with a bang, a major event over California. Many witnesses saw a spectacular fireball, which we are now referring to as rock stars instead of shooting stars because people are seeing something that is just not typical, in my opinion. These reports are quite dramatic. Um, and right now, we're getting some reports starting to come in from the East Coast, from Maryland, uh, Potomac, Towson, and uh, Severn. And uh, one person describes it as definitely one of the coolest things he's ever seen. Um, another person described it as fragmenting. It broke into many pieces. Um, gave it a minus 9 and minus 13, respectively. Um, the one out of the Potomac, they didn't give much of a description. So it's orange, red, and brown. And again, multiple chunks multiple chunks moving in tandem with the main object and this one here they did hear a sound popping whistling sound and that was um, out of the Potomac so I'm sure there'll be more reports um, associated with that and that like I said that just come in within the last hour so I have to wait and see how many more come in on that but the night's still young and, and we'll see what uh, see what tonight brings but looking at the NEO uh, program we do have a close encounter coming up on the 19th, which will be Saturday.